40 years ago today, the 1981 hunger strikes came to an end. On that Saturday afternoon, I was lying on my prison bed in the H Block Hospital, having entered my 55th day on hunger strike after replacing my comrade Kieran Doherty, TD. By this stage, I was almost totally blind, weighing about seven and a half stone and constantly vomiting green bile. Four days prior to the end of the hunger strike, I was examined by an external doctor. He asked me to lay back flat in the bed before pressing his fingers gently under my rib cage on the right hand side. I almost slept out of the bed in agony uh, as the pain radiated throughout my entire body. My condition was severe and life threatening. My liver had become enlarged and began to shut down. The doctor told me that even if I ended my hunger strike there and then, he couldn't guarantee my survival. As blunt as this news was, I didn't let it cloud my vision or commitment in seeing the hunger strike through to the end. I had created a, a psychological and emotional shield around myself. It didn't matter if I got good news or bad news. It didn't matter what rumours were circulating about a resolution being found to the hunger strike. Myself and the other hunger strikers were under no illusion of what it meant to volunteer for the hunger strike. We were told quite clearly that when commencing the hunger strike, you would be dead in two months. The reality was really that stark. There was no dressing it up. Not you might be dead or you could be dead, but that you will be dead. The day before the hunger strikes ended, I had a meeting with the OC of the blocks, Bick McFarlane. Bick told me that the leadership had decided to end the hunger strike on account of the family intervention. It was an obstacle that we just couldn't overcome. Given the severity of my condition, he told me that I could come off the hunger strike immediately and hopefully increase my chances of survival. But I told him under no circumstances would I end my hunger strike until the strike had ended and I was ordered to do so. So at 3 p.m. on the 3rd of October, all those who were left on the hunger strike gathered in my cell in the prison hospital. I called in the chief medical officer and told him that we were terminating the hunger strike. We were gathered in my cell, defiant, unbowed and unbroken. Thatcher tried to label our struggle for national liberation as criminal. The screws tried to break us with beatings, strip searches and torture tactics. But what they fail to grasp or understand is that there is nothing in their whole imperial arsenal that can break the spirit of one Irishman who doesn't want to be broken. The aim of criminalisation was to isolate, marginalise and ultimately defeat our struggle. The sacrifice of our comrades ensured that the outcome was actually the opposite of what the British intended. Our struggle has gone from strength to strength and we are now within touching distance of United Ireland, the objective for which our ten comrades sacrificed their lives. The sacrifices of Bobby and Frank, Raymond and Patsy, Joe and Martin, Kevin and Cairn, Thomas and Mickey will continue to inspire us as we build a new republic.